Dear TV viewers, okay, so today's talk is going to be beneficial for not only our physiotherapy professionals, but also the general public. So let's hear this from our guest for today. I feel very proud to welcome our speaker for today, Dr. Umama Maria Khan. Umama is a qualified physiotherapist and an alumni of Sancheti Institute of Physiotherapy. She is an ACE approved antenatal and postnatal Pilates exercise specialist. She has completed ACE and ACSM certified sports and exercise nutrition as well. She is an avid researcher and is currently working at Spry Therapeutics, which is a US based healthcare IT startup where they provide end to end solutions to PTs, OTs, Cairo based in the US. They are currently developing an AI assessment tool for the physiotherapist. So let's get to know the details from Umama herself. Hi, Umama. Welcome to the talk today. Hi. First of all, tell me, how does it feel to be on the other side of the screen? It feels amazing. And <laughs> to be very honest, this is so surreal. I mean, uh, I have witnessed so many uh, interviews and sessions happening on Physio TV slash Ortho TV. But then being at the other side of the screen is so good. Trust me. <laughs> Okay, so uh, first of all, tell us about the entire uh, healthcare company that you are working with right now. Yeah, sure. So I'm working at Spry Therapeutics, as you said in the introduction. First of all, thank you so much for a lovely introduction. Uh, so yeah, I'm working at Spry Therapeutics. It's a IT-based healthcare startup based in US. And as you said, we cater to PTs and OTs and chiropractitioners back there. So uh, Taking it from here, we have a couple of uh, major projects going on because we give EMR, EHRs, all of the insurance claims and everything. Like we give an entire dashboard to our clients. Also, this is not something I'm working on. I'll come to my part of the uh, team wherein we are uh, working on building an assessment tool for our PTs and building up an exercise library. Wow. So, uh, sorry? This exclaiming, oh wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, if you want, I can a uh, little bit go into a detail of this. So uh, as you must be knowing, this is not the first of its kind exercise library. We do have exercise library at, uh, in the world. There are a couple of good names in the market. But what we are catering to and our vision is that along with an exercise library, basically for home exercise program, that's where we need exercise libraries majoritively. So apart from that, we are aiming to have an AI-based model, which will monitor slash, uh, you know, give us a report to the therapist. So it's not about uh, letting know, also giving real-time feedback to the patient, but also giving back a report to the therapist so that we know if he or she is doing well during the home exercise program, because that's where we lack, right? In the clinical settings, we can monitor and supervise that's absolutely fine but when we send our patients back home we are not sure if they're doing it right and if that's and that's why the exercise is not working so we are taking one step ahead with this exercise library wherein we are making an ai model which will also keep an eye and give real-time feedback and also give us the report he also it's not about replacing physios to be very honest it's just about helping hand to a physio wherein it will be helpful for the uh, PTs and OTs. And coming back to the other part of it, we are providing assessment tools, wherein uh, it will be an assessment program. The AI will give us a report, not judge. The AI cannot give the clinical thinking or rationally behind everything, but it can, of course, uh, as we have gauge uh, analysis laboratories, it will similarly give us angles and something, some compensations or some ang uh, postural malalignments or something like that. So it's more like they are going to give you all the engineering point of view where I have my uh, angles and everything measured already on the, uh, by the AI. And then you have the physiotherapist interpreting that result, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah. So of course, so we'll get a report. Okay, we'll just get a report. And me as a therapist, not like any, any therapist for the matter of fact, I'll just get a report of my patient. And then now it's on me what to take a step, what step to take ahead, you know? Because uh, to be very honest, AI will not replace physios. That, that's something I'm not uh, promoting anything in near yeah. future at least. Yeah, because 
physiotherapy is not only about uh, giving exercises that's just a part of it it also uh, has personalized assessments more so uh, human touch empathy and critical thinking rationally behind everything so ai is just going to give a helping hand or rather assist in this fast paced world it will be um, more so like a step ahead for a pt because now the pt can monitor and have a hold on the patient also at home and also in some so for example it it will be helpful for screening you know for uh, it, there's a company of about 1000 employees and we need to screen them for um, a treatment protocol or something we might not know if everyone has a back pain or everyone needs pt for the matter of fact so we can give them give this uh, model as a a, a screening tool wherein we will get for about from 1000 people we will get, get about 100 people who need pt and that's how so our screening time uh, is yeah uh, i mean we are cutting down on yeah. screen times yeah. and all of the pre clinical would, tests so, uh, so kind of if if i have this question how does it help in screening because unless and until um, i don't know what to screen for how am i going to go with that quick assessment yeah so we do have cohorts for example uh, i want to screen for range of motion of back pain like spine in general so i'll ask i'll give them that exercises range of motion of back for example side bending forward bending all of those just the range of motion now the ai knows what is the ideal uh, range because we have fed the ideal range now the ai knows about it and if a particular person does not fit into the normative value he the ai will let us know that he doesn't come into the normative value then we can assess further you know we can get, take it further from there but most of us like for an, for a for our class for example if we are a people of 60 not everyone must be having decreased level of flexibility or everything right so there is no need of uh, assessing for low back pain of each and every person of okay. course if he or she complains first hand then that's a different scenario but if you are just screening for health care uh, like you know just for an over overall right. it's going to be more beneficial when you have these yeah. camps in huge areas where you just want to quickly go ahead and reduce your time on yeah. uh, screening and just get that ai do all of it and then you know those patients coming to you for the treatment absolutely yeah like that okay so apart from you gave us an example of range of motion so what else uh, can the uh, ai assess like our assessment goes huge so what are the limitations of this uh, thing Uh, limitations are lot that's why i'm saying that the physiotherapists do not do not have to worry because they are not getting replaced it's just that it will be helpful at this point in time uh, we are aiming for range of motion we are aiming for um, you know isometric exercises wherein we ask the patient to hold something maintain it for how, how for a particular time or more so like a repetition exercises where we ask the patient to for example do 10 squats you know something uh, endurance related uh, assessments for example i ask the patient to do um, bicep uh, strengthening for about 10 reps and let's see where the patient stands like the person stands rather okay. so all of those things i think uh, this is going to be very beneficial if i want to go for a functional assessment or a functional right. of my patients yeah more than functional yeah of course now which test to run or uh, which um, population to cater all of these are our choices as a therapist ai is not ai is just uh, is going to help us whatever we ask the ai to do likewise okay so this uh, you've spoken about the screening thing uh, then do you have something like a post treatment or uh, as in the treatment part let's come to that how is uh, the ai going to help us with that primary treatment yeah. uh, i'm afraid not actually because i believe like you must be agreeing to this fact ki the actual treatment you have to be uh, really critical and uh, more rationally based so yeah. whatever I, i feel i need to do i don't think so uh, ai would be helpful much in that space or of course it can be helpful to document things 
it mm. can be helpful for all other aspects but not primarily for the treatment like uh, so okay we'll take an example so we always had google for so long right yeah. but the um, i would say the web had the fact for example you put it on the web asking i have headache and i i have blurry vision what do you think it is so the google says that you might be having uh, 10 things this 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 and yeah, one of them can be possible scenarios yeah exactly so um, but that's not what a doctor does right yeah. he examines the patient uh, emotionally and rationally and also looking at the family history or his uh, habits or whatever you know so ai is of course one step ahead than google it's not web of course uh, ai i was going through some uh, papers and everything and ai has given um, diagnosis earlier as well but after the diagnosis what you have to do is uh, according to the doctor's choice right yeah. so i feel in the primary treatment i'm afraid and i'm glad more than afraid i'm glad that ai wouldn't be uh, actively taking part in it but yeah like a para uh, all of the work we do apart from the actual treatment like documenting and asking the patient to you know count or something like that i have a um, home exercise program or something like that it will be quite helpful there so yeah okay so what about the after part like the main primary thing once i know that my patient is comfortable doing it at home i want to shift him or her to a uh say a home based physiotherapy so can you explain how is it going to help in that sorry your voice i couldn't hear you yeah uske I'll, i'll repeat i'll repeat yeah. so uh like we already discussed we've got a primary treatment of course given by the physiotherapist and when we have to shift the patient to a home based uh physiotherapy exercise regime so at that time how are these uh, exercises going to help like we all have a pre video set already which is going to help the patient yeah yeah so that's what exercise library will consist of it will consist of uh, all the exercises like uh, from the acute to gym based exercises everything in between like the spectrum is quite large uh, there are specific instructions so i basically my job is as a clinical consultant uh, i major majoritively work in the pre production and the post production of this exercise library project i'll explain it how uh, pre production as in to identify exercises to correctly script them and uh, all of that you know before we go on the before it goes for shoot that's pre production so that's something i work on during the shoot we also have uh, experts during the shoot to uh, make the model do the right exercises and activate and recruit the right amount of uh, muscles and everything but i primarily uh, do not have a role there as of now i also work in post production post production is once we get the videos uh, i assess them and uh, for some sort of uh, any mistakes or any mal alignments or something which is not been taken of taken care during the shoot or have missed on, out on so we have a team of uh, pts which look into the post production as well so of course with this we i'm talking about all of this is uh, i want you to understand that this video are not something um will be will have a research backup because we also do have a research consultant we also did have so anything which we feel that needs a, a backing of re research or a backing of some sort of facts or something like that we do have that team ready so these videos are catered according to what pts have approved of a cup and not one our team of pts have approved of so you know that these videos will be uh, something which we can rely on completely yes. then when we give that to the patient and the patient does it we will have an ai model which will keep an eye rather let's just say like that keep it keep an eye we we'll click pictures we will we'll have videos so even if something goes with is something is not right and the ai of course can pinpoint something we have the videos which will be sent to the therapist for example you will be sent to you and then you can see your, see the video see the pictures and the uh, angles and everything which yeah. ai has measured and then you can it will be it will be faster for you let's just say that everything yeah. made i have to go through it once and then it's there ready in the yeah. 
for the patient. Exactly, exactly. If you want to go beyond the reports the AI gives you, because of course, as I said, AI is not going to give you everything. If you want to look at the video, we also have that. And it's in the uh, piece of the home, you know, because after COVID, uh, we have realized that tele tele rehab and everything has taken a lot of, um, it has grown up, you know, it has grown in the market and everyone's busy. They want everything at the, um, at the space of their home and everything. So I feel this is going to help those individuals as well. Of course, the, I'm not saying that everything's going to happen uh, with the laptop or at home. No, it's just that as a PT, I feel more in control of a patient and his exercise session, which I, was, which I wasn't at this point in time because I do clinical practice as well. I am treating patients at this point in time. But what I feel is once I leave the patient, what he does after that during his, yeah. during his home exercise program is I have no idea. And the, the communication is so uh, disrupted because he's not able to explain it to me what exactly he did and what gave him pain. And I'm not able to understand what must have has gone wrong because he doesn't uh, replicate what he has done there. So Most I think uh, one of the limitations that we have... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this entire project is to remove the limitation, not to replace PTs. I, I am repeating this because this, uh, whenever I talk about this, this comes comes across as a very uh, different idea at first. So I just want to be sure that uh, doctors in general are not are, are not made to be replaced. But this job has a lot of facets to be taken care of, and that's why this is one of the most renowned professions uh, in the world. Absolutely. And I think as uh, healthcare providers who are giving treatments via the manual contact, definitely no app can replace you. Exactly. And that's why we have something called as manual therapy, right? I mean, uh, for example, if we both are together in a cubicle and you are giving manual therapy, what you are doing with your hands is between you and the patient. Correct. Yeah. If, even if I'm observing with my eyes, I cannot possibly think hey, how much of pressure or how much of um, ma uh, manipulation or whatever you are doing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's beyond understanding of two humans at least at this point. So let alone AI. Yeah, I just correct that one point of for our viewers that this is not going to be similar to the YouTube videos which you get online because there you just have something like Umama correctly said, I don't know what the PT is doing there in the video. Yeah. You just cannot replace it. This is just for an assessment tool and for the patient for better understanding of the home-based exercise programs. Somewhere the patient I think is going to feel like he or she is constantly in touch with the physio because that video is on giving that constant instructions of what we give in the clinics. Exactly, exactly. And the instructions are catered like that to the population wherein simplest things. For example, on YouTube, there are good videos as well. But yeah. then uh, there are some videos wherein uh, it is assumed that the person in front of you will understand some of the, uh, you know, language or some sort of lingo which we use but with our videos we have made sure that it's the most basic words and most basic scripts which we use so that uh, any person not associated with healthcare would understand and that's how we we talk to the patient in the most basic uh, words i think we have catered all of that so uh, how do you all send these videos i mean uh, do you all mail it to the patients post the th uh, therapy session yeah so uh, we as a company will uh, take up PTs, like PTs are our, are our clients. So we give our exercise, we will be giving our exercise library to them. And okay. from there, uh, now, now that as a therapist, I have everything which is provided by Spry. Now I'll just choose like, hmm. for example, choose three or four exercises uh, according to what I feel, according to my rationale and send it across to the patient. It will go in, in, a, in a way, probably like an email or a message both rather or one of it and yeah so and we we it, it really goes as a prescription so we'll be going as a prescription that this exercise to be done two times into uh four repetitions like that and with five holes or something like that okay okay so uh like you said i think we've worked quite uh we've spoken quite a lot about this you are also working with some it professionals in your company so can you tell me how is that corporate world different from the clinical settings that 
uh yeah I'll, I'll talk about it because uh this is something very interesting actually we don't get to see other professionals uh working up with us other professionals as in we all are healthcare workers so it might be that i'm working with a nursing staff or a physician more closely enough but not uh as a designing team graphic designing team or it professionals in general so this was a quite a quite a um, interesting experience because as rehab professionals ourselves i feel uh, we are problem solvers yeah and um, evidence analyzers you know i uh, for a lack of better word we are all of this we have physical physics background with an artistic background and all of that together so i think it was a great experience because uh, they work or uh, their world revolves around this their world revolves around analyzing thinking critical nature of the problem and all of that and i think i could fit in well because we come from a similar background apart from an healthcare knowledge base i also have practiced this during my clinical hours right i think you will agree to this fact so i feel uh, it was a great amalgamation but apart from that of course that industry is way different than ours i would put this straight and i think this is what is making me interested in my job and my uh, career here because it's not about uh, shifting my career as i said i am also doing my practice side by side but with this i i understood that as pts i'll see a very important point here that uh, ai will not replace the doctors but the doctors who do not use the ai for their advantage will be replaced so for everyone That's here statement that you've made yeah so for everyone here who are youngsters in college or whatever you have to be uh, you don't have to be allergic to this uh, increasing technology because you have to use that to your advantage and that's how it will be a ladder to to be a better doctor because if you decide not to use it you might be replaced and that's a fact so and that is one of the reason i wanted to explore this entire new field which is physiotherapeutic but non clinical there's just so jobs like these are non clinical pt jobs because these are pt related but not yeah. the regular clinical uh, perspective so yeah i think uh, that that was my decision to take up something like this and uh, yeah i think it will be interesting for all those who are quite young and they're wanting to try their hand at something else as well there are quite a few jobs and job opportunities in the market currently and it is great i i think it was in there when i was in my first year i had not thought about something like this five years from here but uh, i'm sure people graduating out in next two to three years there will be more and more opportunities and there are a multiple opportunities across the world as well if not here as much currently there are a lot of opportunities which which comes into a category of non clinical pt jobs wherein you will have to use your physiotherapeutic knowledge knowledge sorry <clears throat> knowledge but uh, it will be towards a non clinical uh, lane mm. so i think we are looking at a really large picture from now on yeah. the scope is definitely increasing for uh, using technology and physiotherapy yes so let's say this is for the future that we are seeing so a lot of young minds uh listening to you are going to think about uh they want to follow you so any tips you have for them any tips or suggestions that you want to give them yeah so uh but i'll be a little selfish here i'll just say ki first of all because i come from a very research oriented background i am in love with research let's just put it with straight so i feel that everyone uh, around me when if they ask me what should they do to stand out i feel they should concentrate on the research and reading papers if not performing one or doing one at least reading papers because i have observed that people are reluctant to go back and read or uh, read the new and uh, newer advances into anything clinical or non clinical for the matter of fact and I, one of the biggest advice i can give them is keep reading because it's not about once you graduate and you get a degree you are not going to stop learning there i would i would rather say you start from there i mean you yeah. will agree to this fact Definitely. that uh, yeah because in my fourth year i used to think bas i'll be once i'm done with this i'll be done reading and learning and all of that but trust me that was a structured study 
now from here i have to take a step ahead and learn you know back then i was fed or probably i was uh, made to learn because that's how oh, our I education think, i think the uh, the seed of uh, getting that curiosity of research was planted in sancheti yeah and at that time you didn't want to do it but now i think you feel that research and reading papers getting updated is really important yeah absolutely no no i was always a very uh, a big air research enthusiast so i was uh, i always had great views about it and one of this is one of the advice i would rather give second uh, i would suggest ki if you are great in clinical or not great in clinical you you will be pursuing physiotherapy right but yeah. apart from that if you want to pursue something uh, else related to your field like i am doing please go ahead because in this time and uh, age i feel uh, you will have to keep up with this rolling dice you will you will, you will have to keep up with something which you are also great at you know if you are good at for example i know my classmate is doing content writing so if you are good at your clinical and also good at content writing please pursue it this is not the era where you are going to stick to one um, space of working as a career you can have a you can have multiple interests and that's completely okay because i wanted that someone to say that to me it's okay that you have two or three interests and that, like two or three um things which keeps you on your toes it yeah. is fine because reading and speaking <laughs> public speaking is something i'm really interested in with uh something of Great this background much. so and i am doing all of this so i just want every youngster to know that it's fine it's absolutely normal and you should have a couple of more things to keep you interested and keep you busy and that's how i think in coming years you will be uh, more happier in general because uh, back then i think 10 years from here we were of the mindset that uh, ek job hai and woh pursue karna hai do it for like 12 hours a week even today do that yeah so i think and it is absolutely fine i'm not saying it's wrong but i know the youngsters these days are their attention span is quite less let's just not number it because four scores specifically yes yeah and the searches say it's about 0.8 seconds you know so i feel if you have mind running everywhere might as well use that you know use that for your advantage because if you can't stick to one thing it will be great you can divide your days how we divide our exercise session ke two days of strengthening and three days of cardio whatever so i can do that i do two days of clinical five days of non clinical job so i think that should be something i have i have seen into my life uh, bringing out a lot of change into my perspectives because i love both i can't leave, leave clinical so yeah you can have both the things that was really a very good uh, i would say a suggestion for all the people watching this test especially people who got more than one interest apart from physio so definitely they can go ahead with that umama yeah. do you want to add anything else to your yeah. talk i think we've covered and you were have also got a quite a lot especially me i've got quite a lot of uh, information regarding your uh, company yeah tell me sorry sorry you just complete no 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 you tell me it's okay yeah one thing i just remembered one of the advices i i usually give and i forgot speaking about it right now whenever i have a word with my juniors i always tell them your graduation or whatever your studying years is not only about studying you have to yeah. have your hand in extra curricular activities and colleges do have them and something like the social first not everyone would like this so something like uh, public speaking or uh, managing people because i i have done that in my past years and I, to be very honest wherever i am right now all the professionalism i have learned is have learned apart from what i have things that i've done things in college apart from studying you know studies have not taught me uh, things like time management or um, how to communicate rightly how to put forth a point and respectfully that's a that that are skills you will learn in your uh, early 20s and i want you to learn that from your college on your colleagues on your teachers because they are there to help you so rather than coming out into the market and getting to learn all of this from people you might not know in the beginning it's safer to learn from people you know like teacher like 
colleges colleges are your second home teachers they are very they they have this protective energy around you and it's great to learn it from them rather than coming out in the real world and learning so right right now is the time to learn all your uh, what what do i say activities that you are passionate yeah, your skills basically so, um life yeah, yeah general how to speak how to take hold of take charges and all of that so yeah that is something you should learn okay wow that was a really good talk umama thank you so much thank you so much for having me it has been really informative and i hope our viewers are going to definitely look forward to seeing where your company is going all the very sure. for it and uh, thank, thank you so much for joining in today for the session thank you so much for having me thank you it was a lovely time <laughs>